Welcome to this version of our Solid Edge blog, in which we're going to look at how to create a custom draft template. Solid Edge allows users to create their own custom templates. The most common custom template created is the draft template. Users create draft templates to save custom sheets, custom background sheets with custom title blocks and boundaries, etc or to save certain settings in your draft document, such as custom variables, drawing view standards, edge display settings, etc., or to save custom properties for reuse. Solid Edge also has a unique template called a quick sheet template, which allows you to capture certain view orientations and predefined parts lists. This slide provides the basic steps for creating a basic template. Users can create fairly simple templates or fairly complex and involved templates. However, these basic steps always apply. In the following demonstrations, I'll walk you through the basic steps for creating a draft template. The first step is to start with an existing template. So I'll start by opening up an isometric draft template. Once the template is open, I would suggest opening your background sheets. You can do this from the View tab or by right mouse clicking on the Sheet 1 tab and selecting it from the shortcut menu. Notice that the default template has four background sheets as indicated by the four tabs at the bottom of the display screen. Click on each of the tabs to see the different background sheets. Notice that each contains a non-printing background watermark. In this demo, I'll create a custom folder for my templates. I'll open my Windows Explorer, and you'll notice that on my C drive, I've already created a custom folder called My Custom Templates, which is currently empty. Your custom template folder can have any name and reside anywhere on your computer or on your network. Back in Solid Edge, click the Save command. Browse to your newly created My Custom Template folder. Then save this template as my underscore custom underscore draft underscore template. This is just the name I'm using in this demonstration. When you create your own template, you can use any name you wish. Once you save this, we can begin customizing the template. I'll start my customization in the Solid Edge Options dialog. I'll go to my Drawing Standards page and switch from first projection angle to third projection angle and apply that. I'll then select the Annotation tab and toggle on the Show Detailed View Borders option and apply that. Keep in mind that I can always go into these other tabs and set some global settings for draft. You can customize any of the global settings for your template, but as global settings, remember they can always be overwritten on an individual basis. In this example, I only want to use an A2 background sheet for my template, so I'll delete the other three. To do this, right mouse button click on the sheet tab that you want to delete and select delete from the shortcut menu, and then click OK to the warning message. It's good practice to keep saving the file after each change. I'll now switch back to my A2 background sheet and fit the view. I can then select and delete the revision history table and select and delete the title block. Before attempting to draw your own title block boundaries, may I suggest a tip. Currently, your sheet boundaries are not grounded and free to move. It's a good idea to lock these down before attempting to draw anything else. To do this, I'll use the Relationship Assistant. I'll select the entire outside boundary. I then click on the Auto Constraint Options. I'm going to make sure that I'm 
placing geometric relationships, horizontal, vertical, and key point connect. And for the dimensions, I want to use the horizontal and vertical locations. I click OK to the options. I accept this. And then I'm prompted to pick my horizontal location and my vertical location for dimensions. And now I've got this connected at the corners with dimensions on it. I will then start drawing the boundary for my new title block. And I don't have to worry about my boundaries being shifted if I make changes to the dimensions on the title block. Using the sketch tools, I'll create a simple title block. I can even use the dimensions to control the spacing of my title block. Everything shown here was taught in fundamentals, including the relationship assistant. So I'm not going through the details of drawing and dimensioning in this demo. I'll then hide my relationship handles and delete the dimensions. We only needed them for initial placement. I'm using Smart Select here to select all the dimensions. And then I just hit my Delete key. Next, I'll use the Insert Image command, which is found on the Sketching tab in the Insert group. I'll browse to where I have an existing image saved. I'll select the image file and click open. In the dialog, I'll click OK and the image is inserted into the draft file. I can adjust the size and locate it as I see fit. I'll then use the note command to create three notes, a drawing file note, a drawn by note, and a date note. As I create each note, I'll position them in the title block. Once again, this is a command that's taught in the fundamental course, so it's assumed that you know how to do this. Now, using your select tool, you can edit into each of these notes and change the text size. In this case, I'll go from a 3.5 font size to a 5. Notice when I placed the logo, the border was turned on. So I'll edit into the command and hide the border. Once again, I'll save my progress. Next, I want to add some property text callouts. So I'll select the callout command. These callouts will act as variables in my title block. So I'll clear any existing ones and select the property text icon. In the select property text dialog, I first select index reference. I scroll down and select file name, no extension. I hit select and OK. On the text and leader tab, I can select a desired font size. I'll click OK to accept this. I'll make sure my leaders are turned off and then I'll place the call out on my title block. Since we have no file name to reference, you will get this rectangular box with an X through it. 
I'll create a second callout. Once again, I clear the previous callout from the callout window. I select the property text icon. This time we'll use from active document. And I'll scroll down and look for the origination date. Hit select and OK. Once again, I'll go to the text and leader tab and select my desired font size. I accept the callout and place the date in my title block. Remember, you can always reposition this using the select tool. These callouts will populate when I place a file into the template and save the draft file. I'll save my background sheet modifications. The next step is to go to the View tab and turn off the background sheet. And here is our worksheet. I'll do one final save and close Solid Edge. To make this an accessible template, I'll open up Solid Edge Options. I'll first select the File Locations tab, and then select the User Template row and click on Modify. I'll then browse to My Custom Folder Template. I select it and then click Select Folder. I apply this new setting and dismiss the Solid Edge Option dialog. If I then go to the new startup page, you'll see my custom template is now available. If you would like to learn more time-saving customization tips and tricks, check out our Solid Edge Customization Workshop, now available on our online training page at the designfusion.com website.